Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Showing Up to Your Life podcast and YouTube channel. My name is still Art Burns. <laughs> and you know what? I'm especially, I'm really actually very especially excited today. Um, I just had, uh, so, so it's been a very busy day, you know, which is cool. You know, in the past, that would have been something where I've been like, you know, in the morning, like, oh my gosh, how am I going to get through this? What's going to go wrong? How's it all going to, how's it going to hurt? You know, <laughs> like how bad is this going to be? You know, uh, but I don't do that anymore. Right. When I look at a, a day full of uh, full of meetings and podcasts and, and everything else that's going on, I look at it as an opportunity to, you know, an opportunity to share some information and to and to to maybe, you know, say something that might help somebody really, really help somebody in a very important way. And um, <clears throat> and so that's, you know, that that really kind of uh, goes into, uh, you know, something that happened in two of these different calls today. And this will be the third one now, uh, all in a row, too. So I did my, um, you know, as you all know, I've told you before, I, I, um, I participate in another podcast called Learning to Surf uh, with a wonderful Wonderful dude named Adam Asdell. He and I have a conversation every week. <clears throat> We call it the Adam and Art Hour. You know, sometimes it's a sometimes it's an hour that's only forty five minutes long. Other times it's an hour that's ninety minutes long. But it's uh, it's the Adam and Art Hour, and uh, and so I had that, and then right after that I had a phone call. You know, a meeting with a couple of clients, and in both of these, ex, you know, um, uh, you know, meetings and calls, uh, the the concept of gratitude came came up, and. Um, and I, I've covered this in the past, right? If you you may have seen, uh, you know, a number of different um, uh, episodes I've recorded uh, talking about gratitude and specifically talking about gratitude journaling. And uh, and so I just want to throw that out there. It's not what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to try to tie it in somehow. I think it will sort of it'll make some kind of thread uh, <laughs> threading kind of uh, connection. But um, but it's not really what we're talking about today. But because it's just come up so much today, I just feel like it needs to be said here, okay? Um, <clears throat> if you've ever considered doing a gratitude journal, um, I, I really recommend you try to start. And I have some great, you know, instructions to do that. It will not take any effort at all on your part. I mean, you know, minimal effort, um, super easy practice, but really, really one of the most valuable things that I've personally ever done for myself. And I hear this from so many other people as well. Um, you know, basically, if you find yourself, you know, in a very pessimistic place, then that's a clear sign that you need that, that gratitude journaling will help you a great deal. And it's actually an intrinsic part of our well-being is to have the ability to have an uh, a positive outlook <clears throat> on the on the people and circumstances around us. And so uh, so it's it's really, really valuable for your well-being um, to to have that that sense of of optimism. <clears throat> and like I said, <clears throat> if you find yourself as somebody who is, pardon me, who is somebody who is sort of has a default pessimism, which is how I used to live. You know, like I said, I used to wake up in the morning and think, oh my gosh, look at this schedule today. How am I going to get through this? This is going to be so horrible. Everything's going to go wrong. You know, that's pessimism, right? But you can look at it at a schedule and say, wow, look at all the different people I get to help today. And, and, and who knows what might happen? You know, who, maybe somebody will cancel a meeting. Maybe something will happen that doesn't make this look so bad. And I wonder how it's going to feel afterward not you know not looking at ahead of time but really go through it and see how it feels be open to it right be optimistic that maybe it will come okay you know and so so this is something that's changed my life and it could change yours too so if you're interested in uh, the instructions that I'd be happy to give to you um, just gotta hit me up okay you just gotta send me an email or I'm gonna put the link in the description below to to book a, a free call a free uh, a phone consultation with me um, so we could talk about the gratitude journal there too but I can certainly just email it to you okay it's very simple really really effective practice. All right. <clears throat> but what today I wanted to talk about is uh, a little bit different <laughs> from gratitude. Although I do think it's going to tie in somehow. I'm going to try. Let's see what I can do. I, I am the master of segues here on the <laughs> on the learning to uh, on the uh, showing up to your life podcast. I'm pretty good at the learning to surf one too. So, <laughs> so let's see if I can segue uh, back to the gratitude through what we're going to talk about. But you know, as I said yesterday, I want to talk today about the difference between rage and anger, because 
there is a difference, and and that difference is not necessarily uh, very well, uh, very commonly understood by people. Um, you know, myself <laughs> included. Uh, most people <clears throat> look at rage as, and they see rage as the sort of evolution of anger. Right, that, that rage is just that superlative form of anger. Right, the most angry you can get is rage, and there is some truth to that. Right, there is some truth to the well. <clears throat> let's let's differentiate the emotion of rage from the expression of rage. Right, because that's where it feels like that's the most angry you could possibly be. Right, and that that's that expression of rage. Right, where we're shouting at someone, or we're we're pounding on the desk, or something, or or in the the most extreme form of this, we're actually you know engaging in physical conflict of some sort. Right, like whether that's spanking a young child, or or you know literally shoving somebody out on the street, which is very very dangerous. Okay, so please. I, I beg of you, please, if that's something that you get involved with, no matter how many times you've gotten away with it up till now, please, 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 please contact me if that's something you find yourself doing. If you find yourself ever <clears throat> getting into a physical confrontation, and I mean even one time, that's the sign that, you, you know, I, I don't want to say you need help, right? It's not about that, but but it's a sign that your rage is something that, that could wind up you know, being very dangerous for you in a very immediate and, and, you know, sometimes irreversible way. Okay. There are people out there who respond to violence with extreme violence. And even though you might think that just shoving someone is just you, you know, sort of staking out your place somehow. Well, if that person has a weapon or, or, you know, or, or is, you know, prone to more violence than you are, that could turn into a very ugly situation very quickly. And I can tell you that from experience. Okay. And so I don't want that to happen to you. Okay. So if you, if you find yourself in that place, if you've even one time had a, had a physical confrontation out of an angry, uh, experience, please get in touch with me. And I'm not, maybe we won't work together and that's fine, but please just let me talk to you for 45 minutes. Okay. So use the link below. Okay. <clears throat> it's important. Okay. All right, so that little uh, PSA out of the way, the public service announcement out of the way, um, you know, <clears throat> rage, you know, well, well, so so the thing that anger and rage do have very much in common is is very, you know, is, is evident in what I just talked about, right? And I've talked about this before in the last few days here, is that <clears throat> one of the things that anger and and by the way, just a little plug here. Uh, I am running a webinar, uh, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. May 16th is when my webinar is going to run. My webinar is called uh, Transforming Anger into Motivation or something like that. I still haven't kind of come up with a catchy name for it. Maybe you have one that you could suggest. Um, but but that's what it's going to be all about. It's going to be about really understanding our anger, you know, where it comes from, what it's there for, how we can, you know, uh, manage, you know, not manage it from a, you know, an anger management point, but how can we harness the power of this anger, right? And and to, to really be the most motivating factor that there is, because that's what anger is. It's the, it's the deepest motivation that we have. But as I've said here a lot of times, if we overuse anger, it actually becomes, it, it stops being motivational and actually becomes, uh, you know, paralytic. It actually, you know, creates inertia. It creates our, our, our inability to do things, right? And another thing that anger is very, very common, you know, a, a very common um, characteristic of anger and, and this is especially true for rage as well, right, is that it changes our perception of, you know, of the the impact that our actions are going to have. And that's what I meant when I said, like, shoving someone, right? You know, when you're in this 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 place of anger, right, and, and whether it's just extreme anger or true rage, and we're going to get into what the difference between those is in a second, but if you're in that place of anger, <clears throat> sometimes it seems like a good idea to shove someone. Or to to physically confront something, right? But it's not just physical confrontation either, right? It, it seems like a good idea to say something. It seems like a good idea to to have a certain facial expression. It seems like a good idea to slam a door or to hang up on someone on the phone, right? All these things seem like logical and and understandable and and reasonable, um, you know, approaches to a given situation, right? But they only seem that logically that that logical and 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 reasonable because of the anger that you're feeling, 
right? So that's where it becomes a very tricky thing, right? Because when we're, you know, when we're in that place, our, our, our actual perception is changed on such a level that we don't understand. But it's not even just the outward perception. It's also the inward perception, which means that when we're in that place of anger or rage works this way as well, it's very common that way. Um, you can look at, 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 at anger and rage as like first cousins, right? They're very, very closely related, right? Um, they're not brother and sister, but they're cousins, right? Um, and so, so both of them, though, also... Not only is it going to uh, to affect the way that we perceive our expression, right, and our actions, but it's also going to impact the way we perceive what our stimulus, right? Meaning that when somebody says something, right, you know, when you're in a place of anger, you're going to translate that thing as the most offensive, the most uh, provocative, the most confrontational way. Right. So so even something that somebody says that's very neutral, if you're in a place of anger, you're going to perceive that as very negative or very hurtful or whatever it is. And you're going to again, you're going to respond in a way that seems logical, <laughs> but is not. It's way overreactive. Right. And so so these are all like just pitfalls all around us where anger comes in and rage comes in. All right. And so so the reason I bring this up and the reason why I wanted to talk about, you know, both anger and rage is to show you that there are very common similarities to each. Right. And that's what makes it very hard to understand, like where one is coming and where the other one's coming. Right. Like like we you know, like a lot of times we can feel, you know, rage and and identify it as anger and we can feel like anger and identify it as rage. Sometimes we're right. But oftentimes we're not. And so I, I thought it would be helpful now to kind of cover this a little bit. And this is something we'll be talking about in the webinar and the course, of course. <laughs> right. Um, but but the the so let's talk about what anger and rage are. OK, so the at their very <laughs> at their very core and the very basic level, anger and rage are emotions. And there's nothing special about them, particularly. There is something, yeah. There's a hierarchy of emotions, right? And and anger and rage are, are all the way up there at the top. So so they do enjoy this place, this this you know this uh, uh, castle on a hill of your emotions, if you will, right? So they do they do um uh you know they do enjoy that sort of distinction, if you will, right? But at the end of the day, <laughs> they're still just emotions, right? And emotions are there to do something very specific for us, right? Every emotion that we can possibly experience is, is there to serve the purpose of either moving us towards something that we desire or that we need or that we love or to push us away from something that we, that we see as dangerous, as a threat, as a, uh, a discomfort, something that we fear. And so in that sense, <clears throat> all of the emotions that we experience are either going to be rooted in love or they're going to be rooted in fear, right? And so, of course, anger and, and, and rage are going to be on the fear side of things, right? <clears throat> so, but, but the, the important thing to remember, though, is that no matter what you think about your anger, no matter how powerful it might seem, no matter how powerless you might feel to control it, right? At the end of the day, it is just an emotion. And just like any other emotion, we can practice the skills of Mod of, of modulating our emotions, right? Like that is something that we have the ability to do, right? It's, it's rooted in the, you know, and this is the, the very tenet of uh, the very basic concept of emotional intelligence, right? Is that through self-awareness, right? The awareness of our emotions, we then lead into self-regulation, right? So, so in that sense, as I tell you all the time here, right? It's never going to be about not feeling feeling the anger or even the rage, right? It's okay to feel those things. It's how we act upon those things. It's how we express those things. That's where 
the trouble can sometimes come in. And that's what the transformation is all about, right? Before you express yourself in anger or rage, we can transform that into something that, you know, commonly would be called assertiveness, right? Like instead of yelling and pounding your fists and screaming about something, you can say that same something in a reserved and controlled manner. In each case, you're delivering the same message, essentially, but in, in the case of the, of the really angry and, 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 and out of control person, that, that message is not being received by whoever else is, you know, to whom it's being delivered, right? But in the latter example, the person who maintains control over themselves and doesn't express their anger in that, that, that you know, uncontrolled way. I almost just said rage, you know, because that's, again, that's not what it is. But, but the person who, who, who allows themselves to, to, to express themselves without that out of control shouting and pounding and screaming, that person is likely to get a much more positive, uh, you know, consequence, positive result of, of that message that they're trying to deliver, right? So that's what rage and anger have in common, right? They're both just emotions, right? And just like any other emotion, there's a few uh, very specific qualities that they are going to be governed by, right? It's just like physics, right? Number one, they're, the emotions are, are in entwined and deeply connected to the thoughts and the physical sensations that we're experiencing, right? And so the more awareness you can bring to all three of these, the emotions, the thoughts, and the sensations of the body, the more regulation you're going to be, uh, is going to be available to you, right? Um, the other really common thing that, that or the, the important thing that, that anger, rage have in common with all other emotions is that they're temporary. They're very temporary. You know, and and the first point how they're tied into the thoughts and their their impermanence are very closely related here, right? And what I mean by that is that, uh, so Jill Bolte-Taylor, who I talk about here a lot, she's one of my my hero scientists out there, heroin scientists, I guess you'd call her. Um, she wrote a book based on a stroke that she had. Now, here's a neuroanatomist having a stroke, and she's like watching it and giving us play-by-play of how the stroke happened in her head, right? Because she's she, in her brain and nervous system, right? She She's so well, you know, studied and, and, and expert in understanding the workings of the brain that she actually could see what her stroke was doing to her. I mean, amazing, right? So she wrote a whole book about this called My Stroke of Insight. And uh, in this book, she tells us that emotions last on average 90 seconds, meaning that that the electrical chemical thing that's happening that creates what we call an emotion is only lasting a minute and a half. And that's ridiculous, right? People tell me like, come on, are you kidding me? That's not possible. Come on, Art. Come on. What are you talking about? I was angry for three days this week. Come on. I was, I've been, you know, excited about this thing for months. Come on, right? Well, <laughs> the reality is that that the emotion does only last 90 seconds, but what we wind up doing, and this is where it's so tied in to the, 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 the intertwining of our emotions with our thoughts, right? That what we're doing is we're resetting that clock over and over and over and over, right? So 90 more seconds, 90 more seconds, 90 more seconds over the course of days or weeks or months or even a lifetime. And so in that sense, the anger and the rage are very much habitual. You know, they're very much something that we practice over and over and over again, and we become really good at them, right? And so, so that's where these emotions seem to last, like I said, a whole lifetime. They become actually part of our personality, right? But that's only because we're engaging them in our thoughts and the sensations of our body. All right, so we'll get into that. I've covered that in many podcasts before, and we'll talk about it again, I'm sure. But but now let's talk about the ways in which anger and rage are different from each other, because this is really, really important to understand, okay, or really helpful to understand. 
So again, both of these things are simply emotions, right? Now they are, again, they are in the, the sort of hierarchy of emotions, right? Like there's, there's sort of the, um, well, actually, let me hold on a second. <laughs> so the emotions of rage and anger also have a, a range to them right? Like anger can be something that is, you know, just a, a tisk, right? That like, you know, a minor annoyance that you go into the bread aisle and they don't have your bread there. Ah, oh, damn, that's anger, right? But, but the same thing is if somebody, you know, took something from you, somebody robbed your house, right? And you want to, or hurt somebody that you know, you want to, you know, you want to exact revenge on that person. That's anger too, Right. So both of these things are anger. Right. And so uh, so so it's not a you know, it's not an on off, you know, zero sum kind of thing. It, there's a range to it. Right. Now, rage. The emotion of rage, unlike anger. Right. Again, because anger can be anything that you know, or anger is an emotion that can be applied to many, many different circumstances. Right. Again, something as simple and as and seemingly innocuous as a, you know, something being gone from the shelf in a store to something really life devastating. Right. All of those are governed within within uh, anger. Right. Rage. Right. Rage is a little different from that because rage when we're when we're experiencing that that you know sort of ultimate feeling of rage you know and again a lot of people will call these things just forms of anger right and and, and i guess it's okay if we call it that i i I like to differentiate it because it, 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 it helps me to sort of, you know, relate to these things in it. And that's, and that's really the ultimate thing here, right? And that's what this course that I'm going to be giving in a couple of weeks from now is all about, right? It's changing our relationship to these emotions, right? Because that's the key, right? And, and so, so by understanding how these two things differ from one each, from one another, it allows me to relate to both of them on a, on a, you know, deeper and more, um, <clears throat> you know, more, uh, um, you know, functional way, if you will. Right. So let's talk about what rage is. Now, I'm going to tell you something that my, um, the very first, um, uh, you know, the, the person who got me into this work, the person who is literally res responsible for me doing this right here, talking to you right now, instead of running like a burrito food truck, right? <laughs> like that was literally, I had the life, you know, I had a decision to make in my life about seven, eight years ago. And, and I was talking to somebody who's a, a very dear friend and, and somebody who is a, a, a spiritual healer and helped me out with my spirituality in very, very deep ways. She is the person who, who convinced me that I could do this and, and, and convinced me to try to do this. So Eileen, if you're out there, Eileen O'Hare, you're a wonderful human being and I love you so much and I can't wait to tell you about all that I've done. <laughs> I mean, we keep in touch, but not as, you know, we don't live close to each other anymore. But anyway, the point that I'm bringing up with Eileen is that she gave me the most profound and amazing little um, catchy phrase that's helped me so much to understand my anger and my rage, the differentiation between the two and how they, they relate to each other and how I relate to each of them. So the phrase that Eileen taught me is as follows. If it's hysterical, it's historical. Okay. Now rage, right? Rage does not have a, a long uh, uh, range like, like anger does, right? You don't become enraged because of a, a cupcake not being available to you, right? Like that's, you know, that's not what rage is. That's anger. When you feel that kind of annoyance about something, you know, that little low lying kind of stuff, that rage doesn't apply to that. Rage only applies when we're enraged right we're, we're we're explosive we're 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 losing our stuff right so anger can be at that level but rage is always at that level okay that's what rage that's where rage lives right and so it's hysterical right it's something like when we're when we're losing it right that's when we become hysterical right and so in this way anger can become rage and that's a different topic and we can talk about that another time but in the few minutes we have left here i just want to talk about how what that means to say if it's hysterical it's historical and 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 so why that applies to rage so much right because when we are enraged about something it is not you know almost never is it about the actual thing that we're experiencing 
right? Rage, you could say, is the product of chronic anger, right? So that, that when we practice being angry about things every day and over the course of years, we become, you know, some of those things become our rage. And what I mean by that, and this actually ties very, very neatly and very nicely back to the concept of cognitive dissonance that we talked about a few weeks ago that was, uh, that was uh, requested by one of our lovely patrons. Um, uh, and I miss you, Lorenz. I, you know, it's been a while since we've talked, but I, I hope you're doing well. Um, <clears throat> so, so cognitive dissonance, right, is where a deeply held belief is challenged, Right. And, and we, we don't allow ourselves to accept that, that, that deeply held belief being challenged. And instead, we create this, this mental um, acrobatics that allow us to satisfy ourselves. Right. So as I told you, the example of, of uh, cognitive dissonance easy and and uh, sort of uh, common example of cognitive dissonance is is thinking about a politician right like you have a politician who you you've always believed in you know your whole life you've been you know voting for this person backing this person in every way and then one day you turn on the news and you find out that this person did something that is completely outside your moral uh, you know your moral belief system right like something that you could never accept that this person did right maybe it was an infidelity uh, maybe it was a, a bribery kind of thing, you know, whatever it was, it was something that no, like that is not the person that I believed in for all these years. So in that moment, you have a cognitive dissonance happening, right? You have your deeply held beliefs, and then you have this new information, right? Now, what we do in, to, to satisfy this a lot of times, what we do is we say, the news is fake, right? Like, like I can't believe the news because I already believe this thing, right? And so, so that thing that that dissonance that we we experience and the way that we try to you know to to rectify and to resolve that dissonance that's what becomes rage right and that's why we say when it's hysterical it's historical so when you become enraged it's when some you know sort of deeply held value or deeply held belief or some trauma or some uh just just really you know frightening and disturbing memories right are being activated or or challenged right or or insulted if you will so like a a deeply held belief like and this is why you know rage is often associated with religious fervor right because you know if if you know religion for a lot of people that's that's the deepest belief that anybody could have right and that's something that is you know almost unshakable for people right like i will not allow you to shake my foundation of my belief in my you know higher being whatever that happens to be right and so when somebody comes and says no your beliefs are wrong and this is what's right, that is likely to trigger our rage, right? Because we're, we're going so deeply into this, this memory that we have, this, this, you know, this, this, you know, again, like it becomes almost like, like challenging, like the 1984 thing, right? Like two plus two equals five, right? Like, no, <laughs> like that is not going to, I'm not going to allow you to say that, Right. And so and so that's oftentimes where the rage is coming from. So so in its you know, so so anger is something that is usually very present. Right. Anger is something where we're we're experiencing anger about something that's happening right now. And it's all happening. It's, it's encompassed in the, the now. Right. But rage is something that has to do with something from our past. Right. And and or perhaps even a future thing, like if we have a, a, a deeply held, well, a, a past deeply held uh, vision for the future and somebody, you know, challenges that, well, that's going to also result in rage. Okay. So, so if you, if you want to just remember the phrase, if it's hysterical, it's historical. And the reason why that's important in a, uh, um, you know, sort of real life context, right, is that, is that you can, you can monitor that in real time. Right. You can say to yourself, like, OK, I'm feeling this hysteric in my body. I'm, I'm, I'm becoming enraged. It has very little to do with what's happening in front of me right now. Right. And so by understanding this and by allowing myself to see this, I can start to differentiate like, OK, what actually is bothering me here? Right. And if it is something that's that's from, you know, 
from somebody who did something to me 10 years ago, well, then I can't really reasonably take it out on this person that's right in front of me, right? And so this is how, again, we're going to change our relationship to rage and our relationship to anger. And in this changing of our relationship to these things, now we can transform them and we can transcend them into a place of happiness and a place of motivation. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode today. I know I did. Uh, really happy to, to have this opportunity to talk about this stuff. Really so excited about this webinar and this program coming up. So if you or anybody you know feels like, you know, if you feel like you or anyone you know could benefit from this kind of thing, just show up to the webinar. I mean, it's so easy. I'm going to put the link in the description to sign up for the webinar. Uh, it's an hour of your time. It's going to cost zero. I won't even take a donation for the webinar. It's completely free. So show up. It's next Sunday, not this Sunday, Mother's Day, but the following Sunday, uh, six o'clock mountain time, five o'clock Pacific, eight o'clock on the West and uh, on the East coast rather, and 7 PM in the heartland. And, uh, and I would be so delighted to have you there to, to just sit in and check it out, right? You don't have to participate. It's 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 meant to be an interactive um, uh, pr workshop, right? It's not meant to be like a teacher classroom kind of thing, but it's okay if you don't want to say anything, you don't want to turn on your camera, that's totally fine. Just sit and listen, okay? Because you never know what you might learn, all right? All right, everybody. Thanks again. I wish you well, and I'll be back again tomorrow. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.